previously on Horrible Film Recaps. When are my new hands going to get here? Furiosa! The green place isn't what it's cracked up to be. Do you have any uh, doxycycline? And now, on to our feature presentation. The title of this movie is Friday the 13th. Chris Tucker sure picked a winning franchise. 1980? Apparently, colour wasn't invented until New Wave was. Nana Visitor apologises for forgetting about Thomas Riker, but the counsellor is having none of it. Present day? It must be Christmas. What forest wizardry caused this tree to grow in the shape of a bridge? The Star Wars nerd realises he has a lightsaber in his pocket and goes off in search of Ewoks. But instead of brown furry buds, he runs across some green buds instead. However, Jason depends on his crops to support his lavish dirt hermit lifestyle, so begins aggressively reclaiming his inventory. Brad and Janet decide to go house hunting and find a fully furnished fixer-upper, complete with a music system, bicycle rack, and convenient whistle storage. Unfortunately, another buyer has his name on the property. Yet another person decides to steal the ganja crop, but Jason's been keeping an ear out for intruders. He decides it's time to evict the trespassers and move his operation north. He places the woman in his home security roasting bag, while her partner is caught in a narc trap. Brad and Janet decide to snoop a bit before heading home, but after Brad ruins the head-sized bath bomb, Jason politely asks them to leave. While returning to camp, Janet comes across Dennis, who is still caught in a bear trap. Why are you in a bear trap, Dennis? She asks. You're not a bear. Before Dennis can process that foolishness, Jason introduces her to his home safety machete. Meanwhile, another group of intruders ask Jerry Ober if he's seen any of their missing flyers. Apparently, they're ten cents a piece and too expensive to abandon in today's economy. This DEA officer attempts an undercover purchase from a local mule, but abandons the operation when he realizes he's still in uniform. The rowdy trespassers decide to crash at Jason's guest hideout, where they promptly abuse his generous mini-fridge policy, continuing his search for the missing flyers. Tony asks the operator of the town crud spreader if he's seen any. Bag on the left of me, bag in my hand. Here I am, bag on the shoulder again. Fearing that he's drawn the attention of law enforcement, Jason decides to make a run for it. But first, he needs to recover his Canadian passport. Running to the dock, Jason realises his boat was bogarted by intruders. He makes short work of them by using his do-it-yourself Steve Martin kit and his friend the Angry Peer. Finally packed and ready to trade dollars for maple leaves, Jason suspects that he's not alone. Jack and Diane realise they picked the wrong shady boat under which to suck shilly dogs. Upon finding the DEA canoe depository, Jason realises his nautical ruse is undone. Grabbing his rucksack of narcotics, he heads for the Canadian escape tunnel instead. Realising he might have forgotten a few things, Jason consults the cavern compass lady to get a list of last-minute items. Meanwhile, back at the guest hideout, Larry enjoys a shot of lizard squishins. Now available in peaches and feet, Chuckles tells Larry to go to the boatery closet to get a hockey broom. One bug zapper indicates that Jason will cometh by land. As Larry cleans up his mess, Jason arrives and asks for the broom, realizing the hilarity of stereotypes. Larry complies. Feeling silly, Stephen decides to take his walk for a walk. After spotting a blue light special, he window shops for something chill. Jason grows tired of the constant punnery and axes him to stop. Jack and Diane decide to explore the Canadian escape tunnel and run into the compass crone. Have you seen any of my missing flyers? Asks Jack, and amazingly she has the remaining ones in her bindle. 
They then celebrate their success by scampering off into the night. Oh, Canada. This concludes the movie recap. To be blunt, my expectations for this film were high. I thought I'd blaze through it, but I found myself couch locked. My Bud Mary Jane has a half-baked craving to see a joint venture between Jason and Tommy Chong. Good day to you all. If you enjoy my nonsensical ramblings, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. 